today we're going to go from quadrant one and triangles to quadrants two, three, and four, and just generally figuring out things in terms of triangles that aren't necessarily nice ones. So we're going to, in order to do this, we have to know what quadrant an, the terminal side of an angle lies in. That's going to be important because the quadrant will determine what we need, how we do things. We are going to then be able to need to find something called a reference angle, which is going to tell us which of the trig functions that we already know we should be using. And then we're going to do sines, cosines, tangents, and all of that stuff uh, for angles that were given and some that were not, but then it won't matter. We'll just figure it out based on what we have. So we know the quadrants, yes? So let's start with what's a reference angle? Well, so here is my unit circle. This is quadrant one. We already know how to find the sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant of pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. Yes? And given problem number 6, which somebody just made me do in the last homework set, we know that if we adjust things around the unit circle, the only thing that happens is if we take, say, pi over 6 and move it to over here, the only thing that's going to happen is changing the signs of the coordinates, yes? But the coordinates themselves will still stay the same distance away from x and the same distance away from the y-axis. So when we move to quadrants 2, 3, and 4, what's going to be important is how far away from the x-axis we are. That's going to be our reference angle. Instead, we usually go for the x-axis because that's what we know for our pi over 3, pi over 4, and pi over, okay, I didn't do that right, pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. We know how far away they are from the x-axis because that's how we measured our angles in the first place, from the positive x-axis. Well, once we move into quadrant 2, we're going to want to say, okay, how far away from this x-axis are we, the closest one? When we move into quadrant three, we're going to want to say again, how far away from the closest x-axis are we? And when we hit quadrant four, we're going to want to be how far away from the positive x-axis are we? Not taking into account the direction, just the distance. That is what we refer to as our reference angle. And if things work nicely in all of the problems that we're going to do today, our reference angles will all be pi over four, pi over three, or pi over six. Because we know those. Now, how do we find a reference angle? I'm going to put my unit circle up and draw it on the board so I can write on it. This minute. This minute. But we're not going to leave this on because that noise would drive me nuts. Why do we make that noise? What? Why do we make that noise? Something's rattling. So there's something vibrating inside the, the machine that... And that's close to being straight. You need a yardstick or something. I do. The straight is not something I do well. Not that curve goes any better. But it does look a little bit better. It depends on where the curve is. Negative 7 pi over 6. Negative 7 pi over 6 is somewhere in my unit circle. Anybody want to tell me where it is? Quadrant 2. Third quadrant. Third quadrant. I got more. So it's either 2 or 3. You guys are doing pretty good there. Which one? And how do 
we know? what quadrant is your angle in and then I have you find the angle that's coterminal and finally we can find the reference angle so since I'm in quadrant 2 I'm in quadrant 2 so I'm going to do what what am I going to do pi minus the 5 pi over 6 so that's 6 pi over 6 minus 5 pi over 6, which turns out to be just pi over 6. Now, here's the big... 